Doc enjoyed exploring every curve and corner of the line. Sea breezes swirled his smoke high into the air and his green paint glistened in the sunlight. This is just like being on holiday, he puffed. Well, you know what they say, laughed his driver. A change is as good as a rest. Soon Doc was busier than ever. The fat controller was building a new station at the port and Doc pushed the trucks wherever they were needed. Bertie looked after Doc's passengers and the other engines helped too, but the work took a long time. Noise and dust filled the air. Don't worry, whistled Toby. The station's nearly finished. And on time too, said Duck, thankfully. Duck felt his responsibility deeply and talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, how much the Fat Controller relies on me. Ach, aye, muttered Donald sleepily. I'm Great Western and I... Quack, quack, quack. What? Ye heard. Quack, quack, you go. Sounds like you'd an egg laid. Now wheesht and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself, said Doc indignantly. Later, he spoke to his driver. Donald says I quack as if I'd laid an egg. Quack, do you, pondered his fireman. He whispered something to Doc and his driver. They were going to play a joke on Donald and pay him back for teasing Doc. The engines were busy for the rest of the day and nothing more was said. Not even a quack. But when at last Donald was asleep, Duck's driver and fireman popped something into his water tank. Next morning, when Donald stopped for water, he found that he had an unexpected passenger aboard. A small white duckling popped out of his water tank. Nay, do who's behind this? laughed Donald. The duckling was tame. She shared the fireman's sandwiches and rolled in the tender. The other engines enjoyed teasing Donald about her. Presently, she grew tired of travelling and hopped off at a station, and there she stayed. Then the fat controller arrived. Your parts are worn, Toby, so you must go to the works to be mended. Can I take Henrietta, sir? No. What would the passengers do without her? Toby saw Percy by the water tower. Don't worry, Toby, said Percy. I'll take care of Henrietta until you get back. Soon Toby was out on the main line. He clanked as he trundled along. He's a little engine with small wheels. His tanks don't hold much water. He had come a long way and began to feel thirsty. In the distance was a signal. Good, he thought. There's a station ahead. I can have a nice drink and a rest until James has passed. Toby's driver thought so too. Toby was enjoying his drink when the signalman came up. He had never seen Toby before. Toby's driver tried to explain, but the new signalman wouldn't listen. We must clear the line for James with the express. You'll have to get more water at the next station. Toby clanked sadly away. Hurrying used a lot of water, and his tanks were soon empty. Poor Toby was out of steam and stranded on the main line. We must warn James, said the fireman. Then he saw Percy and Henrietta. Please, take me back to the station. It's an emergency. Henrietta hated leaving Toby. Never mind, said Percy. You're taking the fireman to warn James. That's a big help. Henrietta felt much better. James was fuming when he heard the news. I'm going to be late. My fault, said the signalman. I didn't understand about Toby. 
Now, James, said his driver, you'll have to push Toby. What, me? Me? Push Toby and pull my train too? Grumbling dreadfully, James set off to find Toby. He came up behind Toby and gave him a bump. Get on, you! James had to work very hard. When he reached the workstation, he felt exhausted. Some children were on the platform. Coo, said one, the express is late and it's got two engines. I think James couldn't pull it on his own, so Toby had to help him. Never mind, James, whispered Toby. They're only joking. Ha, ha, said James. Next day, the fat controller arrived. I would like you to go to the harbour tonight to collect something rather unusual. What sort of something? Wait and see. Percy was moving trucks into a siding. Henry arrived with his goods train. The signalman switched the points and Percy waited on the siding until Henry had steamed by. Then there was trouble. The points are jammed, called the signalman. I can't switch them back. The workmen will mend them in the morning. It's too late now. Hmm said Percy's driver. I'm sorry, Percy, but you will have to stay here for the night. Where are you going? asked Percy. Home for tea, replied the fireman. Percy was speechless. He watched as the other engines went home to the shed. Night time came and Percy began to feel very lonely. Oh dear, he murmured, it's very dark. Oh, oh, what's that? It was only an owl, but Percy didn't realise this. I wish Thomas was here too, he sighed. Thomas was waiting for his mysterious load at the harbour. Suddenly, there it was. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. It's a dragon. Don't worry, laughed his driver. This dragon is made of paper. It's for the carnival tomorrow. Workmen lifted the dragon onto Thomas's low loader and put lights all around it for protection. Then Thomas set off into the misty night. Percy was asleep in his sidings and had no idea that Thomas was approaching him. cried Percy. I'm not going to open my eyes until my driver comes. Next morning, the points were mended and Percy puffed back to the junction. Gordon was just about to leave with the express. You'll never guess what I saw last night. Gordon was in no mood for puzzles. I'm a busy engine. I don't have time for your games. I've seen a huge dragon. It was covered in lights. Gordon snorted. You've been in the sun too long. Your dome has cracked. At the next station was a sign. All trains must wash down daily. James had just finished being cleaned. Come on, Gordon, said his driver. You'll feel better after a good hose down. Pa! said Gordon and angrily let off steam. You're a very naughty engine, said Gordon's driver. Now James will need another shower. You'll have to wait your turn till later. Good riddance, huffed Gordon. I'm far too busy to waste time with water. He finished his journey safely and steamed into the big station. The fat controller was waiting. So were Gordon's coaches and the passengers. Goodness gracious said the fat controller. You can't pull the train. Henry will have to do it. Gordon, you'd better get clean straight away. 
Gordon was soon being washed. Mind my eyes, he grumbled. Then he pulled trucks for the rest of the day. He bumped them hard. That's for you, and you, and you. Trucks will be trucks, said James. They won't be me, snorted Gordon. I'll teach them. James got ready to take the express when Gordon returned. Be careful, warned Gordon. The hills are slippery and you may need help. I don't need help on hills, replied James huffily. Gordon thinks he knows everything. Earlier, a storm had swept Gordon's hill, blowing leaves onto the track. Even though the storm had passed, the hill was still difficult to climb. James knew this. The signal showed clear and James began to go faster. I'll do it. I'll do it, he puffed. Halfway up, he was not so sure. I must do it, I must do it. But his wheels slipped on the leaves. He couldn't pull the train at all. Help, help, whistled James. His wheels were turning forward, but the heavy coaches pulled him backwards. The whole train started slipping down the hill. His driver shut off steam and put on the brakes. Then carefully, he stopped the train. Gordon saw everything. Ah, well, we live and learn. Never mind, little James, I'm going to push behind. Later, he was still boasting. I'm the pride of the line. I saw you pulling trucks today. You're only a goods engine, snorted Gordon. James was furious. I pull coaches too. Not as much as I do, grunted Gordon. The fat controller has plans for me. James was only making this up, but Gordon believed him. What plans? Er, uh, wait and see. Oh dear, thought James, now what'll I do? Thomas was shunting shining new coaches. Good morning, James. Are those coaches for me? Asked James, hopefully. No, these are for Gordon's Express. I'll fetch your trucks next. But James was going to play a trick on the other engines. Actually, Thomas, I'm taking the coaches. The fat controller asked me to tell you. What about the trucks? Er, uh, give them to Gordon. Come on, Thomas, said his driver. Orders are orders. So when James's driver returned, James was coupled to the coaches and he puffed away. Thomas returned with the trucks. A few minutes later, Gordon arrived. Where's the express? Thomas told him about James, and so here are your trucks. Gordon was very cross, and so was his driver. Wait till the fat controller hears about this. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan, what a clever plan, he chuffed. Then he saw the fat controller. Some jokes are funny, but not this one, James. You have caused confusion. Yes, sir, said James. You will stay in your shed until you are wanted. The other engines teased James. I wonder who'll be pulling the express today, said Gordon. I expect it'll be you, replied Henry. James is stuck in the shed for being silly. James felt sad. Next morning, he went back to work. Hello, whistled Thomas. Good to see you out and about again. I'm sorry I tricked you, said James. Are these my trucks? Yes, replied Thomas kindly. They are pleased to have you back. James puffed into the harbour with his goods train of trucks. One night, Percy was waiting at the junction. The main line train was late. At last, Henry arrived. 
Sorry, he puffed. The mail boat from the mainland was delayed. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Let's make up for lost time. Percy puffed along as quickly as he could, but the sun was already rising as he finished his work. Never mind, thought Percy. It's nice to be up and about when it's the start of a new day and there's no one else around. Percy was not alone for long. Bother, said Percy. It's that dizzy thing, Harold. Good morning, word Harold. I always said railways were out of date, but you're so slow with the post, you should give everyone their stamps back. Post haste. Percy was too tired to explain. Bird brain, he muttered. Good morning, Percy, called Duck. You're up early. No, you're wrong, sighed Percy. I'm back, tired and late. He rolled into the shed and fell asleep almost before his buffers touched the bar. His driver decided to set off early that evening. Thomas was waiting at the station. Thank goodness I've a chance to speak to you. Driver said that the person in charge of the post has complained to the fat controller about the delay last night. But that wasn't my fault, replied Percy. I know, said Thomas, and so does the fat controller. But this post person wouldn't listen. Tonight we'll just have to be quicker than ever before. The engines were just leaving the station when they heard a familiar buzzing. I say, you two, there's news flying about. Where? puffed Percy. All over the place. They're going to scrap the post train and use me instead. Wings work wonders, you know. Always. Rubbish, huffed Thomas. That night, everything ran like clockwork. Thomas and Percy steamed through the stations, making good time everywhere they went. At a station, Thomas noticed a man looking cold and worried. He had missed his train home. We can give you a ride, said Thomas's driver, but it will be rather uncomfortable. Thank you, said the man. Anything's better than sitting here. Bad luck, Bertie, said Thomas. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. Thomas left Bertie and made his way along the branch line towards the big station by the sea. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad. Percy goes to work at the harbour and I do his job here, there and everywhere. Take that! Ooh, groaned the trucks. Just you wait, we'll show you! Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James, if you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shunt trucks here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up! It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter? He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I mean, I am, uh, stuttered James. I, I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. Gordon and James sniggered quietly to each other. Some of James's trucks were coupled behind Thomas and he steamed away to the quarry. The trucks were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the stone from the quarry and then set off back to the junction. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. <laughs> P 
poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Duck pulled away the trucks and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly, Thomas remembered about the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A truck full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. Driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Toby's line crosses with the main road behind the station and for a short way follows a farm lane. Frosty weather makes the muddy lane rock hard and very slippery. Toby stops before reaching the lane. His fireman halts the traffic at the crossing and then he sets off again. By using the heavy trucks to push him along, he has no trouble with the frosty rails in the lane. It is the only safe thing to do in this kind of weather. Toby warned Mavis and told her just what to do. I can manage, thank you, she replied. I'm not an old fuss pot like you. The trucks were tired of being pushed around by Mavis. It's slippery, they whispered. Let's push her around instead. On, 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 they yelled. Mavis took no notice. Instead, she brought the trucks carefully down the lane and stopped at the level crossing. All traffic halted. One in the headlamp for fast pot Toby, chortled Mavis. But Mavis had stopped in the wrong place. Instead of taking Toby's advice, she had given the trucks the chance they wanted. Hold back, hold back, they cried. Grrr, up, ordered Mavis. The trucks just laughed and her wheels spun helplessly. Workmen sanded the rails and tried to dig away the frozen mud, but it was no good. Everyone was impatient. Grrr, ah, wailed Mavis. Toby was in the yard when he heard the news. I warned her, he fumed. She's young yet, soothed his driver, and she can manage her trucks herself, interrupted Toby. They're your trucks, really, his driver replied. Mavis is supposed to stay at the quarry if the fat controller finds out. Hmm, yes, said Toby thoughtfully. He and his driver agreed that it would be best to help Mavis after all. An angry farmer was telling Mavis just what she could do with her train. Having trouble, Mavis? chortled Toby. I am surprised. Grrrush, said Mavis. With much puffing and wheel slip, Toby pushed Mavis and the trucks back. The hard work made his fire burn fiercely and his firemen spread hot cinders to melt the frozen mud. The siding arrangements were awkward. To put the trucks where Toby wanted them, Mavis had to make several journeys. She started making a plan. If we use the teeniest bit of Toby's line, we would save all this bother. Her driver, suspecting nothing, allowed them to go as far as the first level crossing. A few days later, the weather changed. As the snow melted, the quarry grew busy again. Some trains were so long that Mavis had to go beyond the level crossing. Now for her plan. She would go further down the line without it seeming her fault. Can you keep a secret? She asked the trucks. Yes, 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 they chattered. Will you bump me at the level crossing and tell no one I asked you? The trucks promised. But whilst Mavis was away, Toby arrived. He decided to shunt the trucks himself. The trucks decided to bump him anyway. They reached the level crossing and Toby's brakes came on. This was the signal for the trucks. 
On, 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 they yelled. Toby was away with the truck screaming and yelling behind him. No one realised that melted snow had turned a stream into a torrent and the bridge above it was about to collapse. The rails were now like a tightrope across the thundering water. Stop! Stop! cried Toby. His driver fought for control. They came nearer and nearer to the bridge. The driver braked hard. Toby stopped, still on the rails, but with his wheels treading the tightrope over the abyss. Mavis was horrified and quickly came to the rescue. Workmen anchored Toby with chains while she pulled the trucks away. Then she helped Toby to safety. I'm sorry about the trucks, said Mavis. I can't think how you managed to stop them in time. 